good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. As I've been saying all week, thank you all so much for tuning in to the PHNX Cardi's podcast. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star review. I'm Leah with Craig. Day four in Melbourne, Australia. How are you feeling? It was a good day. It was a good day. It was a good day. It's beautiful outside right now. I wish we could show you. We've been trying to show you through some photos how beautiful this city is, but we keep we keep discovering new parts of it. We're going to hit up another one of them tonight yeah. where we were today when we uh, visited a university. More to come on that. spoke to Dallas Eakins. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of beautiful, our set has definitely gotten an upgrade, um, and we would like to th Thank Steven of the Australian Ice Hockey League. He's the play-by-play -play guy. We'll have some um, sound from him later in the mm -hmm. week. But he hooked it up with this amazing Melbourne Mustangs jersey. We have the Melbourne Ice Puck on our table here. For now. For until now, they roll off. It's, been ro it's rolled off like three times in us getting set up here. Um, we got a AFL football over Craig's shoulder. Mm -hmm. We really have leveled up here. Um, and... Again, thank you to Steven, but uh, we're, we're, yeah, our, our set needed some love, and I feel like it got some love. It did. It looks a lot better, and I am, I know it looks a lot like the Denver Broncos yes, logo, it does. but I still want the t-shirt as well. I'm going to get that t-shirt at some point. I'm going to find one. Absolutely. Well, before we get into takeaways um, from Coyote, you, I thought you were about to say a sip of my coffee. <laughs> no, I'm not stealing it. You know what I'm admiring right now, Leah? That the ice is not melted. Because they're... Here, here's how you get iced coffee in Melbourne. You get two giant cubes that take up far less space than all the ice that we get in the States. And you know what happens? They remain in the drink for the entire time that you're drinking it and your drink remains cold instead of little ice cubes melting and the whole thing becoming watery. Truly, this was the greatest discovery we've Seriously, had. This revelation. Is, if we can bring one thing back to America, it is this. Um, it's, it's truly <laughs> unbelievable. I don't think they'll survive the whatever the travel day is but if no no could, no, not if physically to... bring it back oh, bring I back the idea i was gonna try and bring back giant ice oh cubes, i mean bring back wouldn't go over well on the plane bring back the idea of using giant ice cubes okay. it's just yeah revolutionary among many other discoveries we've had this week um and one more which we'll get to in a second we're going to talk about takeaways from day four which was also practice day three we're going to talk about the young unique signing and we're going to talk to dallas eakins at the end of the show um but um, along with our discovery about iced coffee ice cubes, we discovered that we were duped yesterday. We were duped. We this were duped. Is, this is painful. This is extreme. So if you if you watched our show yesterday, you heard us tell our story about how we wanted to go to the zoo on Phillip Island, feed the kangaroos, see the koala bears. Go to the koala preserve. Go to the koala preserve. I've been advertising it for a while. We're going to the koala preserve. So, you know, more or just to recap, morning of. I go on the website just to double check, and it says it's closed on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Devastated, upset, but Craig and I pivot. We still rent a car. We had a great day. We did. We had a wonderful great day. day. Phenomenal meal. So we'll always have that going for us. But <laughs> we, we talk post game interviews post, start post at, post practice post interview. practice. Excuse me. Yeah, no games yet. Yeah. Post practice interview. Andre Turini steps to the, not a podium, just the backdrop. And I said, so what'd you do yesterday? He goes, oh, I went to the Koala Preserve. At F in Phillip Island. We go, wasn't it closed? <laughs> no. My wife got the tickets. <laughs> so yeah. I go back on the website. One of the wildlife preserves is closed on Wednesdays and Thursdays, but the one that Craig has been talking about, the Koala Con Conservatory, was open. <sighs> and that, I feel like it's my fault. So I want to formally apologize to you, to the people, to Sean DePaz, to Bill Armstrong. Sean is not <sighs> sorry at all that we didn't see koalas. He doesn't care. And we could have gone and seen Andre Tourney. That's the that's the part that hurts the most. But um, right, we could have had content yeah. with Andre like petting koalas or something. Yeah. or holding a koala bear. So but anyway, we blew it. We blew it. And yeah. That's literally our only opportunity to go to the preserve. So, yep. oh well, we did have a great meal. We had a great drive. It's man, it's this. The peninsula south of Melbourne is gorgeous. It's beautiful. Countryside is completely different than what we're seeing around here. Rolling green hills with kangaroos hopping through. Them. Yeah, like we wouldn't have seen that. We wouldn't have yeah, seen wild see, kangaroos. There you go. There, there you, you go. Have it. Um, anyway, those were our uh, two little nuggets before we get into hockey talk, but it felt like they were worth addressing. Um, but Craig, we got another day of practice, another day of training camp. It's funny seeing all of the teams. I feel like today, almost every other NHL team had their media day. Coyotes are well underway here with their training camp. Um, nothing major to report on ice. Biggest one being Travis Dermott yeah. was back 
in, in full gear, full participation in practice, which is a huge sigh of relief uh, after we saw him not return the other day. And, you know, with his history of injuries, it was kind of a, a sigh to see him back on ice. Today. Yeah, we don't even know what it was because yeah. it's preseason and they're not even required to say upper or lower at this point in the season. So all, all I know is Bill, Bill Armstrong was hoping like he didn't know on Tuesday whether he was going to be OK and. He was okay he was yep. on, the, on the ice. And for a guy that suffered as much as him through injuries over the past couple seasons, that was good to see. They're, they were back at their full complement of 25 players today. Yep, for sure. Um, Craig, what else did you notice? I know we noticed Matias Michelli out there uh, dishing, dishing pucks as he does. Mm. We saw a couple different power play options, but again... Multiple power play yeah, options. some that had Craig scratching his head a little bit but uh i mean i guess that's what today's all about you patrick know? brown was sitting next to me and we're looking at the unit for because because first he saw logan logan cooley was participating on a power play unit today and andre told us that was going to happen uh after the last practice on tuesday but he was about to tweet and then he's looking at the personnel he's like yeah that's not going to be a unit and that's what's happening right now and that's why we say so often don't get focused too much on what the line combinations look like right now. Andre is juggling them big time. They're trying to find combinations that work or if combinations don't work, that's what preseason is about. And camp is about, it's about experimentation. We saw a lot of that today, but getting back to the Matias Michelli thing, <laughs> one thing hasn't changed. Matias Michelli and Jason Zucker were on a power play unit together. And guess what Matias Michelli did? He sent a cross team pass across the Royal road through a couple of sticks right onto Jason Zucker's tape for a one-timer on which he scored. How many times did we see that from Matias Michelli? The passing, the elite passing skill, it's still there. And it's exciting, the potential of seeing him with Zucker and kind of getting that second door dairy scoring, yeah. you know, after a guy like Clayton Keller. So who knows? There's just so much possibility, I feel mm -hmm. like. Um, but after practice, you know, after we discovered that Andre Cherney went to the zoo, um, without us we uh <laughs> we, we got the chance to ask him just you know it's only been three days on the ice but how it's gone so far for him in his eyes i mean he kind of explained what what today was all about so we'll let him tell you that here i think we uh you know we have a, a core group of veterans coming back you know it's not just having guy coming back we have veteran and a really good player coming back and the player we had our really good as well really good hockey player so it's uh if you compare it to any other training camp for sure it's better we have 25 player you know what i mean it's never had a training camp with 25 guys so uh i know we still have pretty good player down in the uh, easy but i hear that group is really good so uh i think we're moving forward pretty good on structure and details and what we expect so today was a little bit more teaching so obviously it's a little bit less pace a little bit more thinking for the players so it would be good to review a few things tomorrow and take the doubt out of their head before the game start it's important to remember too like i know that preseason games don't mean a heck of a lot but friday's their last practice before they play games yes yeah. it's, it's coming up now so all this work in melbourne or melbourne i keep saying it wrong Mel melbourne melbourne <laughs> is leading to these two games and then suddenly we're going to be out of here so one more practice and and i obviously there's not a lot of preparation that, that goes into these games. You, you're trying to instill so much in camp, system, special teams, how you want to play in a number of situations. So, as Andre said, I'm just going to let it roll. That you don't, you don't rely. You don't worry too much about all those little details. You just want to see them play hard and hopefully – remember some of the things that you've talked about all week. Well, and that's actually one of the other things he said because he was asked about, you know, how the new players are fitting in and, and he kind of made, emphasized, you know, I don't, I want everybody to focus on just understanding the system so that when it does get to the place where we are playing games that matter, that they're not trying to think, mm. where do I need to be? They're just playing their game. Um, play on with, instinct, yeah, play said. on instinct. So yeah. I, I thought that uh, was a, a good way to look at it as well. And um yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how things roll out in the games this weekend. You know, it's too, part of part of this camp. It's weird, and I'm and I'm sure they're they're seeing it as well. You get on the ice, and I'm and I, I'm sure they're focused to an extent, but there's so much else that's going on around these practices. There were so many people there right. today. There by tons the way. of kids watching who went on the ice with Nick Bukestad and Alex Kerfoot and Jack McBain afterward, all skating with them. So you've got that, you know, that's coming that, you know, that you've got events that you've got to get to. You want to ha have a little time to enjoy each other as teammates too. 
there's just a lot of stuff circulating. I, I wonder sometimes how hard it is for these guys to focus right now with this being such a an event. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know. And, it, and it's crazy to think that we still have training camp back in Arizona um, going on A right now, but B will continue to go on when we get back from here. And PD actually will be checking in from training camp at the ice den on friday's show so stay tuned for that we'll hopefully get some updates from the arizona end i just want to note that pd's flying commercial so he said he didn't get pajamas in 36 f Mm -mm. (laughs) do we know that he actually got home um he hasn't confirmed yeah i haven't seen any confirmation either so please see how it goes comment here if you made it home um, but I know a lot of people have been asking how to watch these upcoming games this weekend. They're going to be at 9 p.m. Arizona time, and I believe they're on NHL Network. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're wondering where the heck do I get NHL Network, this is the problem. Like some of you have Cox and it has this and that, and then you have DirecTV and it has that and that, and YouTube TV has that and that. Fubo TV just has everything all in one place. That's what's so great about Fubo TV. Um, and as the season gets underway, you can watch all of your favorite teams on Fubo. Um, NFL, they have Red Zone and NFL Network on Fubo, college football, um, everything. So watch all your favorite college football and NFL with Fubo. You can go to www.fubotv.com slash phnx to sign up for 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. I have to say, you know, I feel like day four for us, so we've slept here three nights now. It's like the first morning that Craig and I both woke up and felt rested normal completely normal could have used some og sleep edition gummies this week i'm not gonna lie um yeah. as we already mentioned earlier in the week we're not we weren't gonna break any laws and bring them with us but you know it makes you appreciate what you have at home and when we get back it's gonna be crazy getting back on the arizona time zone so we can utilize ogs there um ogs they have something for any need indica sativa sleep edition microdose happy balance whatever it is you're looking for and a great delicious flavor as well the fruits and the creams check it out at ogs brands um, online at and on social at ogsbrands.com and at ogs brands and to find them at a local dispensary near you check out all their delicious flavors but you must be 21 and older to enjoy responsibly speaking of training camp and things moving along uh <laughs> speaking of pd and and players he's watching back there yeah yan yeah. the yan Yanik saga has come to kind of an end i mean i don't know if this yeah. is really the end we'll see we can talk about that um Th- this was news that i woke up to this morning in australia time and was like this is not where i expected this to go we've been talking about yan Yanik kind of on and off this summer because he didn't accept his qualifying offer earlier in the summer with the team you kind of think why what's going to happen what's next like what is the plan of action here um yeah. and so he ended up signing anyway so why don't you deal. explain yeah a little bit of the structure here yeah first and i was told that, that he was expected to report today whenever thursday today is Thur- for you. thursday in arizona yeah thursday in arizona supposed to be at practice so <laughs> yan Yanik apparently was in north america at least so that that's advantageous yeah back in, in chechia where it would take even longer but anyway he signed a one-year contract for uh, the salary is 70 750k nhl 100k ahl with a guaranteed overall salary of 125k so a couple things to note here you remember he was a restricted free agent and he did not accept his qualifying offer which was 813 some, right? yeah like 813,000. so Here's, here's the way to look at this. Um, Alan Walsh's agent did negotiate for a little more in overall salary. If you look at it from an AHL perspective, which let's be honest, is probably where Yanya Yik is going to be this season if he remains with the Coyotes. His qualifying offer in the minors in the AHL was $70,000. He got $100,000 and a guarantee of one hundred twenty-five. Yeah, so that's, that's he got a little difference. more money there. So that was a concession that the Coyotes made to get him in the fold. I still wonder if this is the end of this, if they will try at some point to trade him during the season. I get the sense that they were trying to find a home, a new home for him yeah. before the season, but let's be honest. I mean, first of all, what's Yan Yan Yik's value on the market at this point? It's, it's nominal, and the guys were not able to find him something, so I don't know why anything might change during the season, but we'll see where it goes also. 
you got to report now. I'm not saying like his teammates or his coaches are going to hold this against him because he's still going to be there for camp. So it's not that big a deal. But he's got something to prove. Yeah, I was about to say that. If anything, the ball's kind of in his court. If he, you know, feels like maybe he maybe he wants to get traded or maybe he felt like he's worth more, this is the time to prove it. And I know he's dealt with injury issues, so you know maybe he feels like he he could do better. Um, but this is kind of prove it time for Jan Yannick. And hopefully it's something that helps both the Tucson Roadrunners and Jan Yannick. And, that, you know, he can help out Tucson and help out himself and, you know, be in a situation that he wants to be in. And if that situation is Tucson, then make the most of it. I don't know. Um, we'll see how, how it plays out. I just – I, like, was shocked to see that this is how this ended. I know that injuries have impacted him a little bit over the past couple seasons, but – if you remember when he first came in, there was a lot of excitement. He was a physical player. He seemed to fit Bill Armstrong's mold of mm -hmm. what you want players to be. A guy who will go to those hard areas. It's fallen off a little bit. Hasn't, hasn't progressed. And, and again, the injuries have impacted him, but he hasn't progressed the way they would like to see him progress in Tucson. So, I mean, if you, if you do want to move on, you might want to perform. You know, you, you might want to focus on the things that Steve Pot then is preaching down there. If you want to get to a better situation, I mean, I don't know, you know, the, the advice that he might have been getting from Alan Walsh or other advisors, family advisors. But look, if you want to make it in, in the pro game, especially if you want to make it in North America, you, you better be listening to your coach in the AHL who, yeah. like, we know Steve Popman. We've had him on the show a million times. It's not like Steve Popman is playing Mike Babcock games. He's, he's really on the player side trying to do everything he can to help these guys along. So... That should be your primary focus right now if you want to achieve the things that you're hoping to achieve. Yeah, absolutely. But with this signing, Craig, it brings the total contracts um, on this team up to 49 of the 50 available spots, which is kind of an interesting situation. We've talked a lot again this summer about the Coyotes liking to leave those open. If you recall, they claimed Balamaki on waivers. They claimed Connor Ingram on waivers. It kind of adds that flexibility. But for the other guys, I mean, and I, a huge part of this, obviously, is the fact that this weekend the Coyotes are playing three preseason games in three different places all at once. Yes. So they needed a lot of bodies. There's 11 guys on PTOs, and there's one available roster mm. spot. Plus you have Connor Geeky. Plus you have Maverick Lamoureux. Plus you have all these young guys who are vying for a spot, and now it's down to one. Um, again, you know... A, the Coyotes are here. There's 25 players here. You kind of look at this. This is mostly going to be the main roster, but I don't know. Again, for those guys back in Arizona, it's yeah. like, shit, I don't know. It's it's really hard. Like, I mean, we've talked about the possibility of injuries. Something could happen in the preseason. You could lose a guy, and then there's an opportunity. Or somebody really doesn't perform, and you say, well, you know what? We're going we're gonna to move on from you, whether it's unconditional waivers or something else. You trade them for a pick, and then you maybe have a roster spot open. So – those are still possibilities, I guess. I, but I, you know, there's not a lot of possibilities to make this roster. I do think they want to still leave some flexibility. I do think they'll still be open to you guys who go on waivers if, if they interest them. I mean, as you mentioned, they picked up two guys who have looked very promising in the early going here. Um, but it's, it's really tough sledding for anybody to try to make this roster, especially because we're here in Melbourne. <laughs> And those guys are back there. So it's not like they're completely out of sight and out of mind because the development staff's there, the AHL staff's there, but the Coyotes coaching staff and the Coyotes GM are here. So it makes it a little bit tougher. One last thing on that. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, why does Cat Friendly have them at 50? I, I haven't spoken to the folks at Cat Friendly, especially because of the time change and everything, but I did confirm with the team, David Ludwig, who does this for a living, manages the cap. He's like, you know, I even went back and checked. Like, did I get that wrong? Can no, it, because that's his job. Okay. Yeah. So if anybody knows how many players the Coyotes will have a, under contract, assuming again, Geeky and Lamaru go back to juniors, it would be David Ludwig, who's done a hell of a job here in Arizona. We've talked about the contracts on the books. You can't find a bad contract on the Coyotes books. It is definitely 49 if those two guys go back to junior, which I fully expect to happen again, so they can keep some flexibility as well. But those guys also need more development. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, things are things are moving along and it it just all of these moves, it just we're wanting every day is a day closer to the puck dropping on the NHL regular season. You know what else is a day closer for us, Leah? What? Getting to go back to a legal piece. That's true. I miss it.
Um, Craig and I the, today were reviewing all the cuisines we've had here. We've <laughs> had Chinese, we've had Japanese, we've had Italian. Um, I mean, um, I guess American seafood. seafood. I'd stay like. We've eaten everything. We're thinking, what haven't we had? And I said, Mexican. And we both looked at each other and said, hell no, we're not having that here when we have things like Illegal Pete's back in Arizona. I got an email from them today. There's like National Queso Day is on the horizon. So whenever that is. Are they giving away large cases of queso? I don't know. Whenever that is, you know I'm there. Um, And I hope we get to do some pregame meetups at Illegal Pete's this season. Those were a ton of fun last year. You can literally walk to mullet from Illegal Pete's on Mill. That's what, one of the great things about it, and hopefully we'll plan an Illegal Pete's meetup um, on the University in Tucson when we go down on October 7th for the Coyotes preseason game in Tucson. Um, so Illegal Pete's is your go-to spot this summer. You can stop by for happy hour, 3 to 8 p.m. every day at all 12 locations, two in Arizona. Illegal Pete's is the go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beer for 28 years. Today, Craig and I were standing outside waiting for an Uber, both of us squinting in the sunlight. And we're like, what are we doing? Our shade, like both of us had our shady rays in our backpacks. Um, so of course we got them out because shady rays protect your eyes. They're polarized, which is important when you're buying sunglasses. Underrated, underrated importance. Um, but yep, our shady rays, they made it all the way here with us. No issues. Mine's been knocking around in my backpack. They haven't broken. They haven't gotten scratched. Yeah, like I, I keep They're saying that, but that's the thing that I really noticed. They're, They're durable. really durable. And I've had glasses that were supposed to be durable and they were not. And in no. fact, my youngest actually, while a baby, broke my sunglasses on my face by just <laughs> reaching up as a baby. And these are supposed to be like super durable. <laughs> Can't do that with Shady Rays. I Shady Rays. This is um, un- unverified, but Shady Rays are baby proof. So <laughs> I like that. You should use that as your next headline, yeah, Shady Rays. Exactly. Baby proof. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. You can go to shadyrays.com and use code PHNX for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. All right. Well, besides just the games going on this week, mm-hmm. the NHL has really gone out of their way to make a trip this far worth it. No um, doubt, right? For, we went to school today. Yeah. We yeah. Went back we, to school. Craig and I were at a university, literally. Um, never thought I'd step into one in Australia. <laughs> um, but that's because there was a coaching clinic going on with Dallas Eakins and Paul McLean speaking to 80 plus um, youth hockey coaches across Australia, different seminars, things like as detailed as face off strategy to just, you know, how to be a good coach on and off the ice. Really interesting stuff. Yeah, it was, first of all, like props to these guys for flying halfway around the world to put on these clinics, right? Well, they're not clinics. They're, they're literally in a classroom. We walked in and as often happens with me, um, we walked, <laughs> literally walked right past Dallas Eakins, who we were here to interview. I was like, Craig, and we got to go you want to go here? here? Well, no, we got to go like, to the no, auditorium. I gotta go. Go. Like, and, and Leo's just like, he's right there. <laughs> So this happens often with me. I, I told Leah in probably 10 years, I won't be able to work this job anymore because I won't be able to find my, my way anywhere or remember anything. But for now, you have me. And we also have Dallas Eakins talking about this. This is a great interview, by the way. Awesome. Uh, and, and you can tell how into it he is. Before we get to it, it's not just the coaching clinics they're doing here as mm-hmm. well. They're, they're doing officiating training as well. Uh, Don Van, Van Massenhoven, you may remember that name. You should because it's such a great name. Great it's name. one of the best NHL referee names ever. Yep. And this guy was, I mean, this guy was in the league for a long time. He was one of, one of the top NHL referees. He's here as well, putting on clinics for officials. So the NHL is really diving here. It's kind of cool to see some of this happen. But the interview with Dallas was was really interesting to me. Absolutely. So I think without further ado, uh, let's send it to our interview. And enjoy this spectacular jersey. Well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. With uh, Dallas Eakins. PHNX Sports here with Dallas Eakins, a uh, longtime NHL coach in Melbourne, Australia. So let's start there, Dallas. How did you end up down here as a part of the Global Series? Well, uh, it's a partnership between the uh, our coaches association um, and, and the NHL. So uh, both myself and uh, Paul McLean uh, were asked to come. Uh, we came on the Coyotes uh, uh, charter and then um, immediately jumped on a plane to Sydney um, where we uh, interacted with some uh, local coaches, uh, hockey coaches there. Um, then made our way to uh, Melbourne and, and today we've... Uh, Probably got 40 or 50 coaches in there um, where we're putting on a little mini clinic. 
and really applauding. Uh, it's been really inspirational. The, the coaches here are like pure passion, trying to drive the sport, um, uh, not making a living at it, uh, but really trying to, de to develop the kids. And um, it, it, it's been an amazing journey so far for us. Can you tell me a little bit about the format of what's happening? I saw, saw some people in the auditorium, but what does the entire program look like? Well, today it's been really simple. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I've been talking more about the uh, coaching philosophy, the um, uh, the culture part of it, and the processes I go through to uh, build those two entities. This afternoon, I'm talking about player development. Um, Paul got more on the technical side. He was going over power play stuff. Um, right now he's in there uh, doing a lot of face-off stuff. So we try to hit both sides of it, um, stuff on the ice, stuff off the ice. Um, yeah, and, it, and it's been really interactive. And, and, I go, and I go back to like the just pure passion of the coaching to drive a sport in, in a country where it's not the biggest sport. Um, and, and they're... Um, you know, their, their real desire to make these kids better. Will you get on the ice for any part of this, this trip here with anyone? No. Okay. Uh, we're, I'll, I'll be at the practices uh, tomorrow. Paul will be there. We're going to take some uh, coaches over there as well, um, watch the practices, uh, answer any questions. Uh, I'm going to try to get down and see the coaches, uh, just connect with them. I haven't seen some of them in a, in a little bit. Uh, and then enjoy the, enjoy the game. Um, it's been a great trip. I've never been to Australia. Um, yesterday, I, I hopped on a, a plane to uh, Brisbane super early in the morning. I, I spent a good part of the day with a, a rugby team there, kind of going through best practices, trying to learn anything I can. Uh, spent some time at the University of Queensland uh, there. They have a whole coaching uh, um, department there as well. Uh, early this morning, I was uh, with a rugby team here. Um, so, doing lots of like it's been fun with the hockey coaches. Uh, it's it's unbelievable to be asked to represent the NHL. The the league's been very good to me, um, but it's also an opportunity to to dive into some other sports where I've always been like super curious on their cultures, how they're coaching, how they're managing. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a a good time to get educated as well. So that leads me to the question I wanted to ask you. I, I'm sure you've been involved in coaching clinics on some level in in your past, but have you ever done this internationally before? Yeah, actually, uh, a month ago, I was in South Korea and kind of the same thing. So it was a IIHF um, a, a event. And it, what was interesting, the first time ever that I was at a, a, a clinic that had different levels of it, um, but I had nothing to do with the on ice. It was I was there to coach international coaches. And again, like it's, I, I can't even tell you how inspiring it is that these people from countries where hockey is not their number one sport, that they are trying to drive the sport, trying to drive uh, development, trying to be r really great for these kids who do have a passion for it. From a from a teaching standpoint, it. It's different, obviously, if you're in, in Canada or the U.S. or one of the, the European hockey-playing nations. How does it change? How does the instruction change when, I'm sure these guys know the sport, but like you said, it's not front and center like it is in some of those other nations. Yeah, well, the things I'm talking about here, like, they are really transfer, like, they, they transfer well. Like, uh, the, I, I could be talking to a bunch of rugby coaches. I, I could have business leaders in uh, when we're going through uh, culture, philosophy, development, it, it's very transferable. Um, so, you know, it's a, a real mindful uh, uh, approach. It's a real players first uh, uh, approach uh, that I take. So it, there not much changes, um, you know, where Paul's going through through the, uh, the power play and the um, some of the face off stuff. He, he's done a, just an incredible job of really simplifying it. It's very interactive where you can ask any question you want in there. The, and uh, um, he, he's doing a great job of answering those questions. But, like, it, it's amazing how many, like, Canadians or Americans we're mm -hmm. running into who are, who are coaching here and who live here. So it's, uh, it's just not all uh, Australians, but 90% of them are. Aside from the pure passion that you've seen so far, what else have you learned about Australian hockey? Um, ju just that they're... They're, they're crunched in a number of ways. Like, they, ice time's a problem. 
you know, some facilities uh, uh, have closed. Like there, there's a real battle for ice time, and and with that comes the uh, uh, you have to have great discipline on how you're going to manage your ice and how you're going to teach. And so it, it really humbles me for things that uh, in my life, my whole life, that I've really taken for granted. There's always been ice. Can as an NHL head coach, you keep the ice as long as you want. Um, um, our facilities are out of this world. And then to see these coaches going, I, I don't know if I can get my team on the ice next week. I don't know if I can get ice. And But in, in, instead of packing it in and, and quitting and uh, I'm going to go do something else, they, they dig in deeper. Uh, they lean in more. And uh, so that's been my real huge take is just the absolute desire and, and grittiness to get met better no matter what. Last question for you, from a personal standpoint, why are you doing this, and would you like to do it some more? Yeah, like, you know what, this is what fuels me. Like, I, I, I really love talking about, and um, I, I always tell everybody, this, this is my process, this is what I believe in, uh, this is where I come from, from a player's first mindful pr uh, perspective. Uh, I'm not saying I'm right, um, but you may be able to take something uh, from it. And I think uh, if you really break down, at least for me, why I coach, it's, it's two things. Uh, I want to serve and I want to inspire. Uh, that's it. So to be asked by the Coaches Association, to be asked by the NHL, to come in here, grassroots, maybe have a positive effect on some coaches, um, their, their federation, whatever it is, it's that's kind of the payback is uh, I, I just feel like I'm giving something back personally um, to a game where that has given me much and there's been people in my life that have in hockey that have taught me a lot so I, I think it's necessary and it's required to give back I like the jersey by the way jersey rocks <laughs> Dallas thank you so much for taking right. some time to talk to us really appreciate it all right all right. Well, thank you to Dallas Eakins. Really enlightening stuff. Mm -hmm. um, first of Hockey all, the, in South Korea. South Korea. The fact that he's been to three cities in Australia this week alone already, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, and again, I just think it speaks to how much it's not just about playing it two preseason NHL yeah. games here this week. It's about growing the game internationally. And I feel like that's what we've really seen. I know a lot of this is just trolls. <laughs> Who don't have nearly enough information but like to judge anyway <laughs> oh, but, oh yeah that's the yeah, internet that, that never happens the internet on Twitter is... or x or whatever anyway a lot of people think it's just a money grab or what are they doing here are they really like investing in it well you see things like this you see nick bugstad and jack mcbain and alex kerfoot on the ice with kids today who were all watching at the glass while they were practicing ahead of time and then you're like okay an aboriginal okay. ice hockey team. Yes. From Adelaide. Yeah. That's who the three coyotes were on the ice with today. They are investing. Yes. And it's not just money. They're investing their time. They're investing their wisdom. They're investing. If you, if you could have seen what we saw today with Nick Bugstad just talking to a few of these kids. And we all know, like, first of all, he's from Minnesota. <laughs> need to say that for Petey. But Nick Buse has an unbelievable human being, but just he was engaged with him. It was it was almost like watching Shane Doan, the way he engaged. Yeah. Nick Buse has got that level yeah. of engagement with whoever he's talking to. And these kids were just enraptured with yeah. him, right? That's what it's about. That's sparking the love of the game at that level. But all the way up to the coaching seminar that we were watching this auditorium at the university. While we were talking to Dallas, Paul McLean's in there, like, I don't want to say lecturing, but more like engaging, teaching them about face-offs and other strategies that were used in the NHL. Paul McLean, who was a Jackham Adams Award winner with yeah. Ottawa way back in the day, teaching youth hockey coaches in Australia everything that he knows about coaching the game. That's investment. And it's easy, again, to just cast shade at the NHL. It, it, it's, like, it's, it's almost like en vogue to just trash leagues, trash commissioners, do all that stuff. Do some research. Find out what's actually happening. You, there, may, there may be areas where you can criticize still. I won't, I won't say that yeah, they're not, yes. but... They're clearly doing some things on the ground here. There's been events every day, Leah. They're 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 holding nonstop. Events. Every time we see someone from the league, they're like, oh, <laughs> running to the next. Yeah, thing. Yep. yeah, it's crazy. A couple yeah. other things I want to talk about from his interview. A, I think it's really interesting that he 
spent time with a rugby team <laughs> because not only is Dallas Egan's teaching, but he's trying to learn as well. And I think that's the sign of a really good coach when they're interested in that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I found that I found that part really interesting. And then the other thing was talking about some of the the barriers that the, you know Australian ice hockey faces here. Lack of ice being one. It's one we're very familiar with mm -hmm. in Arizona um, as well. So like it needs. It needs, and you'll see when you know whenever you see our interview with um, Stephen White a little bit later in the week. But right. you know, right now there's a, he said there's six thousand ice hockey players in Australia. Their goal is ten thousand. They need to build more rinks to accommodate. Yeah, that. there's only like 20, 20 or so rinks across the entire country, which is the size of the U.S. I know the population is only like yeah. twenty seven million, but yeah, they need more ice sheets, just like Arizona needs more ice yeah. sheets, and that's. We've talked about this so much with with the Coyotes too. If they want to see hockey grow in Arizona, yeah, you can do the ball hockey. You can do all the other things that they're doing, and those things are important. But if you want to get them into ice hockey, if you truly want to grow that part of the game, you need ice sheets. And it doesn't take just investment from the league. There has to be local investors yeah. as well. You have to generate that sort of interest. And the NHL is also – trying to find those partnerships and, and, and those relationships as well. So it's a multi-pronged attack that David Proper told me in that story I wrote a few days ago. They are taking a multi-pronged attack, and they've, they've, they've spent 15 years studying this country to figure out if it even made sense, and they decided it does. And, and you can see when you're on the ground here how much they love the game. I think, let's be honest, there are the socioeconomics are here as well in Australia where they can support the game. It'll be interesting to see where it goes from here. I'm not saying it's going to be a success, but I think it's kind of cool that they're trying here. I 100% agree. So it's going to be a really great weekend. Um, and I, I wish I could bet on it, Craig, but I can't. Um, <laughs> and by the way, we've talked, I feel like we've talked about Sean on every show. Sean and PD, we really miss you um, sincerely. And actually, I was texting Sean a little bit ago because I like, you know, I'm not the one to go to for our parlay picks and stuff like that. Sean's the one with the picks. So Sean actually sent me a bet MGM parlay for Thursday night football. Um, that is Arizona co connection theme, Phoenix Valley connection theme. Um, and this is the, the parlay it's plus three ten on bet MGM right now. So it's the 49 it's 49ers minus 10 and a half. This is for Thursday night football. Brandon Ayuk to score a touchdown anytime. Look at that. ASU, ASU connection. Kid. Yep. And Brock Purdy, two or more passing touchdowns thrown. Another Arizona connection there. Um, and that is all for plus 310 over at BetMGM. So thank you, Sean. And thank you for the very thoughtful Arizona themed parlay. So if you want to tail Sean on those picks, I can't. I couldn't even open the BetMGM app. I tried. I'm very sad. Um, but that's okay. We'll be back soon. But for all of you back in Arizona or any where that um, sports betting is legal, check out the BetMGM app. And if you haven't signed up, we have an amazing deal for you, especially to throw on a parlay because if you if it hits, you can win some big bucks. Sign up for BetMGM. Use the bonus code PHNX. You can place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through BetMGM Sportsbook mobile application of at least $10, and you'll receive $200 instantly in additional winnings regardless of your wager's outcome. You can check out the show notes for full details. And now you can listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Look problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico, in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., New York, or Ontario. I've been saying it all week, Craig, that I really think Circle K would thrive here. 27-11s. And every day that we're here, I believe that more and more. I really do. Um, I want people to know that we've been loyal to Circle K. Too. We, we have. not set foot inside of a 7-Eleven. Hell no. We are a Circle K podcast through and through. Um, and one of the reasons is because Circle K has the Inner Circle, their new free membership program that can save you 25 cents per gallon on your first five Phillips. What a deal. And you can get your uh, get your six free on a selection of Circle K products, pizza, coffee, and ice cold fountain drinks. And of course, get a Polar Pop. Still hot back in Arizona. Buddy, we could have used that gas discount yesterday. Yeah. Just holy saying. moly. Um, you can join the Inner Circle for free by downloading the Circle K app today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. Craig, we, we finally overcame 
something that we've been working at for a year on this show today. Connor Ingram. <laughs> That's right. Joined us on That's camera. Right. On camera. We thought it couldn't be done. <laughs> and he walked out and prefaced it with, I usually do this on radio. And I have to say, it's one of like my favorite interviews we've ever done. It was maybe two minutes long or something, like three minutes at the most. Spectacular. Unbelievable. So that was, that, stay Connor tuned. Connor Ingram can never leave simply because we have to keep him for interviews. Yeah. Yeah. He's an unbelievable quote. He's hilarious. He's witty. He's, he's on the spot witty too. Like yeah. he thinks quickly on his feet. He's really funny and you're going to love this. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so that one's coming. Um, Probably later today when you're, when you're watching this. Camp Confidential. We also talked to Sean Dursey, who's another great personality. I think we're really going to get to know him well this year. Um, he's not shy at all. It's one thing I'll say about Sean Dursey. So um, that's great. And then, as we mentioned, we talked to Stephen White, who does play-by-play -play here um, for the Australian Hockey League, who, again, hooked us up with all this swag you see behind us. Um, and uh, just, yeah, a lot, more, a lot more to come this week. We got one more practice to go. And then we got the two games this weekend, and we'll be recapping those games on our YouTube channel and on our Twitter. Not full shows, but we will give you recaps because I know uh, I don't know how many people are going to stay up uh, to watch, but I'm sure <laughs> a lot of you are. I'm sure a lot of you are. I don't want to judge, but um, Craig, what else do you have coming? Got a piece with Logan Cooley. I'll have that today. It's when you're already watching up. this, it's already up. Look at that. See, we get confused. Yeah, yeah, I'm confused. You can read it right now. Um, but the, uh, again, I mentioned I have a neutral zone. I, I know people like the collection of notes. I'm going to try yeah. and wrap up camp and then we'll get to the games and we'll do that sort of coverage. I'm, I'm going to write something on Dylan Gunther as well. That's coming probably on Sunday, on, you know, the day before we depart. Yep. So that's coming on the website, gophnx.com. Check it out and become a diehard today. Join our discord, get 20% off merch, 20% off events and more, more perks. It's a great time to become a diehard because the season's almost here and we're going to have a lot more events. We're going to have a lot more merch and uh, more meetups. So I'm really looking forward to it. Any final thoughts before we uh, head out and go back back out on the town exploring? That's the thing. We get to explore a different part of town that we saw today around the university. So I'm, I'm just blown away by Melbourne. I'm, I love this city. I absolutely love this city. Yeah, it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. Well, thank you all so much for watching and again, being flexible with us on this crazy time change. Um, sincerely appreciate it. Like this video. I love reading the comments. I loved everyone's replies today in Discord, by the way, <laughs> with what the five things in our Airbnb where I was laughing out loud this morning, reading all those, laughing out loud also in our Discord with people's um, perceptions of Vegemite, which were 100% accurate. So <laughs> Apologies if we offended any Australians with that, but just it's not our taste. Sorry. Yeah, it's not. Um, but we appreciate you all so much for listening, watching. Be sure to subscribe to the PHNX Sports YouTube channel so you don't miss not only when we go live, but all of our extra content. And of course, follow us on Twitter at PHNX underscore Coyotes because we have a ton of stuff on there. And we took over the PHNX Sports Instagram story. So those should still be up if you're watching this live or in the morning. Check that out as well if you're on Instagram and you can follow Craig at Craig S. Morgan. Follow me at Leah Merrill. PD will be at Arizona training camp tomorrow at S. Peter's Hockey. And give Sean a shout at Sean underscore to pause because mm -hmm. uh, we miss him as well. But everybody enjoy the rest of your Thursday. We've done Thursday. It's a great day. This has been my clothes every day. Uh, oh, what was the phrase that I was going to say? See, I can't remember it. You were the one that was hearing it. I, we'll get to it on Friday. Oh, what I was going to. I remembered, but I, it's how for you, how, you going. how you going. How you going. How you going. That's how, how, you doing? how, that's you how going? they greet you here. I, like um, I can't really close the show that way, but uh, good day, everybody. How about that? <laughs>